Greetings everyone, I am Snapjelly and this comment is obviously a joke. But it did cause me to think. Does Oberyn actually need a helmet? And would wearing a helmet actually save his life? I thought about this for a while and I came up with some pretty decent points. So join me in my quest and I'll tell you. Now first of all, in the books they say he does wear a helmet but it's a useless one because it doesn't have any face protection. Which is quite true, a famous example is for example Henry V who got shot in the face with a longbow after either lifting his visor or taking his helmet off completely, which he could have done for several reasons but anyway he took off his armor and he paid for it. So in a way yeah, a helmet without face protection would suck, but not really. I mean, he's fighting a one-on-one -on -one battle, right? And if you have your visor down, you can't see a thing. Like in a lot of historical manuals, people who are displayed to fight a one-on-one -on -one battle are often displayed with their visor up. Because if you don't have to worry about stray arrows or shrapnel or falling rocks, what would be more beneficial is actually being able to see your opponent completely. A visor blocks your vision so much that it would really, it, it's beneficial if it's, it's a large scale battle where everybody wants to kill you, but not if there's just one opponent. So if Oberyn would wear a helmet, it would most likely be one as described in the books that does cover his head, but not his face. Now, with the head crushing. Again, in the book, it's a little bit different as in the show. In the book, it, the, the crushing itself is not really described, but we can assume that the mountain was lying on his back and he had Oberyn with one hand in his, with his thumb in his eye and then he punched him with his other hand and that cracked his skull and also his helmet. Now I'm saying this because it's important. If Oberyn were to wear his helmet in the show where the head crushing was different, it wouldn't really help much. Because in the show, of course, the mountain rolled on top of Oberyn, pushing his thumbs into his eye sockets and under the weight and his strength, that cracked his skull. Now, if he were to wear his helmet, that would simply crack his skull inside of his helmet. That wouldn't work. But aha, you say, if he were to wear a helmet with face protection, he would have been saved. Well, no, because we can assume that the mountain from the show is just as strong as the mountain in the books. And the mountain in the books cracked his skull through his helmet, so... No, he would be able to crack his skull anyway, and his helmet. But, actually, he might still be saved if he wore a helmet. Because the sweep is different in the books. In the books, the mountain grabs Oberyn's knee and after he falls down, kind of just pushes him against his own body, pulling him close and just holding him right here. But in the show, Oberyn's leg is sweeped and a lot of people say that at that point Oberyn could have rolled away. Now I say no because he probably hit his head on the ground which would have caused a serious concussion, giving the mountain easily enough time to grab him and, well, you know, do what he did. But not if he wore a helmet. If he wore a helmet, he would have fallen on the ground, it would be like, tonk, oh, roll out of the way, and he would not make the same thing twice because he's not an idiot, and he would have lived, right? Well, yeah, but no. You see, he probably already would have been dead before that if he wore a helmet. You see, in the show, Oberyn's technique is really unique. He does a lot of spins, flips, kicks and jumps and all of that kind of stuff and regardless of if it's effective or not, and that's a topic for another video, he doesn't. He relies on his acrobatics to win the fight. Now that can be done, but to do that, you need to do every movement precisely at the right time because he's not wearing any armor. So if he would have one misstep, then the mountain would surely take advantage of that, hit him at some unarmored spot, which is practically anything, and yeah, there you go, you, he would be dead. Now, why would wearing a helmet limit his ability, his acrobatic abilities? Well, helmets are heavy. Not that heavy, but they feel heavier than they are because they're not directly placed on your head. You wear padding underneath, meaning the iron of your helmet, the heavy part, is not directly placed on your head, but a little bit away from your head. And that makes it heavier, meaning that if you do this with a helmet, it's going to be this, right? Oberyn probably didn't practice his acrobatics with a battle-ready helmet. So he's not used to wearing a helmet, he's not used to doing them with a helmet, so he's probably going to fail at some point if he were to do them with a helmet. So no, he does not need a helmet. And actually, I have 
one more point, actually a point that exceeds all my other points about why Oberyn doesn't need a helmet. And that's, he already won. Right? If you exclude the motives of the characters for why they did what he did, because we all know why Oberyn acted the way he did, but if Oberyn would have just wanted to kill the mountain, not having suffered, not nothing, just kill him, right? He would have. He won. The mountain was down and Oberyn was fine, completely fine, all the while not wearing a helmet. What he did is he got cocky and he made a mistake, the mountain was waiting for him to make a mistake, and there you go, it became fatal. But no, he doesn't need a helmet. What he needed was a real reason to actually kill the mountain rather than having him confess and suffer. That's what would have had him win, not wearing a helmet. So do you agree with me? Leave a comment if you did, leave a comment if you don't. I like reading comments a lot. Thank you for liking, favoriting and subscribing. And thank you for joining my quest. And I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye guys.